In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Expo push notifications for Android using the new Firebase V1 API. I'll show you how to get your Google Services JSON file and also the new Google Cloud Service Account JSON file you'll need for push notifications to work for Expo with Android. I'll show you how to get these files and upload them to Expo to your account so that Android push notifications will work in production on the Google Play Store. We're going to be using nativenotify.com to set up everything. If you haven't already, go to nativenotify.com, click this sign up free button. It's free to sign up, there's no credit card required. After you sign in, click this create an Expo app button up here. Before going to the Android documentation, it's very important that you follow the start here instructions. Part of the instructions will show you how to set up an Expo account if you haven't already, and also how to create an EAS project. You now need an EAS project for Android push notifications to work. You can watch this video to see a more detailed introduction to Native Notify, but we'll just quickly go through these together. Your first step is to copy these. Go to your Expo app and open up a terminal. Paste those into the terminal and click return. Next, you're going to want to import this register in in push token function, either in your app.js file, if that's what you're using, or if you're using the new Expo router, you'll want to put it in the index.js file or index.tsx if you're using TypeScript. Come up here, paste it right there. This next step says to make sure you're using a hook function. If you're using Expo 50 plus, it should automatically set up a hook function for you. But if you happen to be using an older class function, a class component, you can click here to watch this video to see how to use a React hook inside of a React class component. At the top of your index function or app function, copy this, you'll notice your app ID an app token is already in there for you. Go to the top of the app, paste it right there. You're actually finished with the native notify part of this tutorial. Push notifications are already set up. Now we just need to create an Expo project and get everything set up with Expo to make sure your Android push notifications work with a new Firebase V1 API. First, if you haven't already, you should NPM install globally the EAS CLI. I have already done that. So your next step would be EAS login if you haven't already. For EAS login to work, you'll need to have an account with expo.dev. So if you haven't already, go to expo.dev and create a free account. Then you can run this EAS login function in your terminal. This next part is how you create a project for your app. And again, this is very important. You need to create a project, an EAS project, or push notifications just won't work. So copy this EAS init command, come to your terminal and paste that. If you have multiple accounts, you can pick the correct account and you can just say yes to everything. It should say project successfully linked. If everything worked properly, you should also see this modified app.json. You should now be able to open your app.json file and at the bottom in the extra EAS object, there should now be a project ID. Before running EAS in it, there is not this project ID here, but after you run it, there is a project ID. Once you have a project, push notifications can work. Next, you can test to make sure push notifications are working in Expo Go. Run NPX Expo Start. And whenever you're testing, you need to make sure you test on an actual device. Push notifications do not work in an emulator or simulator. I'm going to open this up on my iPhone. For this to work, you'll need to make sure to have the Expo Go app on your phone, whether it's an iOS phone or an Android phone. If you don't already have it, you can click this link here to be shown how to download the Expo Go app. Once you have it installed, you can scan this barcode to open up your project. This is my iPhone. I'm showing that my screen is open. So my app opened up successfully. And now if I come back to my project, as you can see, it says you can now send a push notification. You successfully registered your native notify push token. If you come back to your code, you'll notice there's a place to put a title and a message. I'll say this is my first title. This is my first message. And we'll see if push notifications work. 
and there it is right there. And so if you received that notification and it opened up your phone, you know that push notifications are set up properly. You'll also notice if the notification works properly back in native notify, it'll take you to this send page over here and you'll see a receipt of your notification down here. To go back to the documentation, you can click this book icon in the bottom left corner. From here, your iOS push notifications are actually already set up. There's nothing additional that you need to do. You can go ahead and run EAS build for iOS and make sure to say yes to everything related to push notifications. And push notifications will just automatically work for iOS in production. But for Android, there are some extra steps you have to take. You'll wanna come up here and click Android and we'll follow these steps together. Your first step, you'll wanna to go to this link. Step two is add a project if you haven't already. If you already have a project, you can just go to the project, but I'll assume you have not created one yet. Click create a project. A project is like a container for apps, so you can name it whatever you want. So I'll say my YouTube tutorial apps. Inside of the project is where you create the app. You can turn on Google Analytics if you want. I'm gonna turn them off. Okay, so that should take you to this page. This is your project overview page. Step three, it says in the project overview page, click the Android icon in the middle of the screen. That's this one right here. If you hover over it, it says Android. And then you'll wanna follow these instructions here when setting up your Android app. This package name, it's very important. It needs to be the package name you're gonna use when publishing your app. It says you can find your Android package name in your app.json file in the Android object in the package property. And if you do not see a package property in your Android object, create one that looks like this. I don't have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and create one. And so let's come back here to our app.json file. And you'll notice there's an Android object. This is where we need to put the product bundle ID. So you can put a comma there and just paste this here into here. This needs to be something unique that nobody else uses. This is the format you normally do it in. You normally say com.org name. So for me, I'm gonna say native notify and then your app name, it needs to be unique. And so I'm gonna say expo Firebase V1. Make sure not to put dashes or anything like that. It should all be one word. Whatever you name it, then go ahead and copy that name. And it's super important that it is exactly that name in this input right here, the Android package name. You can give it a nickname. I'm gonna say uh, Expo Firebase V1. This is not required. You can click register app. This will check to make sure that this name is available. Your next step is to download this Google services JSON. Now, if you've already created your app, you can find this Google services JSON in your settings. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But again, if you're just creating your app for the first time, go ahead and click this download Google services.json file. Something important to know is this note here. If you have downloaded a Google services.json file before, make sure there are no number values in the file name. The file name should exactly spell Google service.json in the root of your Expo app. So you'll notice I've downloaded a lot of Google services, JSON files before. And so there's this number 21. And so it said you need to put that in your uh, the root of your project. So I'm going to go ahead and put this somewhere I can access it easily. I'll put it right there. And then I'm going to put that in the root of my project, my expo project. And now you need to make sure to rename this. If you've done this before, make sure to take out any numbers. It needs to exactly spell Google dash services.json. Step three C put this inside of your Android object in your app.json file. So I'm going to copy that, come back to my app.json file and right under package, I'm going to put another comma and put that there. It should look exactly like this. And now we can go on to the next step. 
and it says as you're creating it, skip this next step. That's because Expo handles all of this configuration for you, so you don't have to do this if you're using Expo. You can click next, and you're all set. You can say continue to console. All right, so you now should have your app here, and there's the app that I just created. Step four is to click the gear icon in the top left of your screen, click project settings. And remember, like I said, if you've already created an app, you actually can come up here, click project settings, and you can come down here to where it says your apps. And you can always download your Google services.json file here. Make sure it's for the right app. If you create multiple apps in your project, you'll want to make sure you're clicked on the right one when you download the Google services.json file. Step five, click the service accounts button right here. Step six, click this generate new private key button right here. Confirm by clicking generate key and make sure to save that in a place you'll remember. I'm just gonna keep it in my download folder. Once you've generated the JSON key, make sure to save the JSON file somewhere where you will not forget it. You're going to need this file for step 14. Step seven, go to this link. Step eight, click on projects. Find the project you're working on. This is the project that was created when you said EAS in it. So mine was Expo Android notifications. Step 10, click configuration and then credentials. For step 12, it's important to make sure there's an application identifier that's already there. If there is not one that is already there, it'll look like this iOS box here. I would suggest do not click add application identifier. The reason is if you click add application identifier, it's going to ask for an identifier and then it's going to ask for this key store file. This just makes it a lot more complicated. Instead, what you should do if you haven't already is come to your project and just type EAS build select Android and just say yes to everything. If you do that, Expo will automatically create a key store file for you. As you can see here, I've already run EAS build. And so it's already using the key store file it created for me. Once the build begins, you actually don't even have to wait for the build to finish. You can go ahead and control C out of this. Then when you come back here, if you'll refresh the page, you'll see an application identifier right there. Go ahead and click on the application identifier. Scroll down till you see service credentials and then specifically find the FCM V1 service account key. Click add a service account key. And this is where you upload that file that you just downloaded at Firebase. I'm gonna click that and drag it there. Click save and that's it. That's all you have to do to have push notifications working with native notify. From here, the way you can test to make sure push notifications are working is you can create an APK file to download to your Android phone. And I'm gonna show you how to do that real fast. You should just Google Expo create APK. And at the top of the list, it'll say build APKs for Android emulators or devices. To build the APK file, you'll wanna copy this top preview object. You can come in here, paste it right there. You'll notice there's already a preview object there. I'm gonna switch this to APK. And now you can come down here and copy this command here. Paste that into your terminal. And instead of saying profile preview, so you're creating the preview, you just want to say profile APK. This will tell EAS to look in the EAS.json file build for the APK object, and it's going to tell it to build an APK file. Go ahead and run that. When it's finished, it should give you a link that ends with .apk. If it says .apk, then it successfully created the APK file. You'll want to copy this link, email it to yourself, and then open it up on an Android device. I'll go through all that with you so you can see how it works. So this is my Android phone. I'm gonna go ahead and find the file I sent to myself. It should look something like this. You should hold it down and click open in browser. This doesn't really work unless you open it in something like Chrome. You could copy the URL and open it in Chrome as well. I'm gonna click open in browser. 
Then it actually opens up the browser and you can say download anyway. Once it's done, say open, say install. After that, you can look for your files. Click on downloads. It should be at the top. You can click that, click install, click open, and there's the app. Now I'm gonna shrink this and I'll move it over here. I'll make my screen smaller and let's go ahead and test out push notifications, see if it worked. So now that this is on my phone, you can go up here and after you've opened it up, you can come to the send page. I'm gonna say Android title, Android message. We'll see if it arrives. Okay, and it arrived on my phone. It's right there and there we go. And so if this works in an APK file, you know for sure this is ready. You can officially run EAS build and create a production build. It will create an AAB file for you. And this is a file you can use to upload to the Google Play Store. They want you to use an AAB file now. Before we go, I just wanted to give you an overview of everything else available in the Native Notify service. What we just set up was push notifications for all of your users at once. They're called mass push notifications. So whenever you come here and send a push notification, it will go to all of your Apple and Android users. You can also come down here to see the API if you wanted to send push notifications using an API to all of your users at once. In addition to that, there's something called Indie push notifications. These are push notifications for individuals. Native Notify makes it really easy to register your users and then to send push notifications to individual users using our API. You can also send group notifications to your Indie subscribers. So say you had three Indie subscribers in a particular group, you wanted to send a push notification to them, you can do that. There's also something called follow push notifications. Follow push notifications allows users to send push notifications to their followers. It's basically a way to set up a social network. Users can follow each other and then you can send out push notifications just to the followers of the user using the follow push API. If you click here to the three people icon to the left of the screen, there's also something called topic group notifications. You can create topics, then you can subscribe users to particular topics and then send push notifications just to the followers of that topic. And lastly, we have something called notification inboxes. Think of how Facebook has a notification inbox. The notification inbox allows users to see all of their past push notifications that have been sent to them. The notification inbox is for the mass push notifications that are sent to all of your users at once. There's also an Indie notification inbox. This allows you to create a notification inbox for each individual user. In the Indie notification inbox, they get the mass push notification receipts sent to their Indie notification inbox. And also in the Indie notification inbox are all the individual push notifications sent to them. So anytime an individual receives a notification, whether it's a mass notification or an individual notification, a receipt of that notification goes into their Indie notification inbox. With Indie notification inboxes, you have a lot more features. You can see exactly the exact number of notifications that they have not read yet. So you could put a little red dot with a number over the inbox to see how many unread notifications the user has. Users are able to delete the notifications in their notification inbox if they want to, things like that. If you have any questions about Android push notifications or native notify, be sure to leave a comment in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.